Detective Comics number six, everything by Tony S. Daniels. We left off last time with Batman losing a guy who he was chasing after through the streets after he mugged and killed some people. Uh, Charlotte Rivers, the reporter, trying to sneak into the Iceberg Lounge to investigate. And Penguin sending three enforcers after her, I suppose, after knowing, noticing what it is she's doing. This issue picks up with none of that, like... None of that comes back at all. It may as well be a new story. <laughs> um, we have a woman and a guy who are on a beachfront property overlooking the Iceberg Casino, and they're talking about how they need to break in there. Uh, the girl is wearing an eye patch. Her name is Jill Hampton. We get that later, but I'm telling you now because it's easier to remember. Uh, and the guy, he he tells Jill like, "Hey, I need to break into the need to break into the Iceberg Lounge and." Jill just produces this VIP card out of nowhere, and he's like, how'd you get this? She's like, well, how about you just focus on the job, but hand. Uh, you need to change your face anyway. And we see that basically she punches his face off, and it's revealed that his name is Jack Houston, a.k.a. Snakeskin, and this is Batman's narration now of him just going through this whole thing of, oh, he took some meds and got a payday and then he gambled it all away and became an enforcer and he's able to change his face. I guess that's the gist of it. Um, but he's working with Jill Hampton for whatever reason. And then we cut over to Batman and Batman is following some trail that involves his fingerprints killing some people. And he arrives at a motel that is just known for a bunch of crimes. He comes up to this bathtub that's just filled with blood, and inside is Raju, who, if you remember from, like, two issues ago, was this character who showed up out of nowhere, was working for the Penguin, and now he's dead. So we really got a lot of mileage out of him. So they did some analyzing on uh, him, feeding into the Batcave, and Apparently his cell phone records they traced and he called a guy named Nicholas Pog and also three conversations with Jill Hampton who as soon as Batman hears the name he immediately turns off the comms and starts asking questions to the motel owner who is himself a jerk. He, he pulls a gun on Batman as he comes around. Batman just angles it downwards, shoots his own toes off because of it, but motel owner and batman just stands there menacingly as the guy just spills like i don't know nothing about no lady named jill but i did see a lady with an eye patch so that's probably who you're looking for so batman leaves and then we go to the iceberg casino where charlotte is just snooping around a room in a maid costume and who comes in but jill who karate chops Charlotte, and then it's revealed oh wait we know each other not only do we know each other they're sisters, Jill Hampton and Charlotte Rivers, who, yes, I did have to re-look up the last name of. So, basically, she's like, man, all right, what are you karate chopping me for no reason? She's like, why are you in my stuff? I know you're a reporter in a goody two-shoes, but you would never rat on your own sister. And then Jill's like, I have enough to put you away for life. And so she, Jill just, like, smashes a bottle and holds up the jagged class. She's like, you want to dance? And then we just leave that scene. And I'm not kidding, it doesn't come back. Like at all. So then we go to Penguin, who's at like his own little meeting with a bunch of D-tier villains. Uh, we have The Gas Man, Hypnotic, and Combustible. Sorry, Mr. Combustible. And basically, I guess from the last issue of the guys being targeted like for their money, these are like rich supervillains. And so they're all pooling their money with Penguin so that it can be safe. And But, of course, Penguin's taking, like, a high fee for this. And they're all just basically bitching about that for, like, two pages. And we see that uh, Jill is walking around picking up info because no one notices the help walking around picking up drinks. So she finds out that all their jewels are kept in a specific vault. Cut over, Batman. Completely separate thing. He's following the Nicholas Pog lead on the cell phones. Uh, he finds one of the guy's, like, runners, I guess you want to say, named Smitty. He scares Smitty into talking, and they break into a place that is a weapons cache, because I guess Nicholas is in the drug running business or gun running business. And Smitty says, like, yeah, no, he was talking to that uh, woman with the eye patch. She left that crate over there. And they go and open the crate, and inside is literally Nicholas Pog's body with a shuriken in the eye. If you remember, I think shurikens were used by the other one. 
or at least some sort of ninja tools. Anyway, then we cut back and it's the grand opening of the Iceberg Casino and Hotel, which I feel like this has already been open for a while. Maybe that was just the Iceberg Lounge and this is separate. I don't know. Regardless, um, Bruce makes the point that he is actually, like he was supposed to be here on a date with Charlotte. So now that he has reason to actually show up here, He's like, oh, Charlotte, I'll be there in just a few minutes. And Charlotte's like, oh, great, let me just freshen up. And they're both doing their own secret thing. And Jill's, of course, walking around. As Bruce gets up there, he sees uh, a boat that doesn't belong. And he's like, all right, cool, I can, I can get up there. And there's this weird reference in the middle here to the events of I, Vampire, number five. Which featured Batman, don't get me wrong, it's not out of nowhere. But, like, it's just a one-panel drop of... Alfred being like, oh, you've got enough to keep me busy, Master Wayne, include, especially that vampire case we've got going on. It was just weird and out of place. Regardless, um, because that one scene with the smash bottle meant nothing, Jill is, or sorry, Charlotte's just walking around using a security guard that uh, Jill had. And she enters into a room and Snakeskin's there and she stabs Charlotte. And of course, like right at that moment, Batman crashes in and he gets real emotional because Charlotte's just been stabbed and he starts beating the crap out of Snakeskin and he lets his emotions get in the way and they both fall into a trap. And Snakeskin does something. I couldn't tell you what. It seems like it's like an airlock, but it leads into just like snow and ice. And it, Batman's saying, oh, I did this to us. I killed us. But I don't know what's happening. I have no clue. So, yeah, he feels bad that he got emotional and blah, blah, blah. I didn't like this issue at all, mainly because from where we left off, there was a guy who stole a bunch of money. There was Jill breaking into, or sorry, Charlotte breaking into the Iceberg Lounge and then three enforcers coming to, like, take her out via the Penguin. None of that comes back. Like, not in any, like, straightforward manner. I'm sure all of this is part of the same arc, considering that it's still revolving around the Penguin thing. But, like, this is a completely fresh start from that other stuff. The only thing that carried over was the Charlotte thing. And even that was, like, you could have just taken three seconds to set that up of, oh, I broke into the Iceberg Lounge and I'm doing this stuff. So, like, who are the enforcers? Why didn't we see them again? Why is this just completely separate from everything else? It just... This was really disorienting for me to read because I was just trying to figure out, wait, I feel like I missed an issue in here. What's going on? And I didn't. And it's confusing. Anyway, no. Um, Art-wise, it's okay. I feel like Snakeskin's kind of stupid looking, just the way they show he changes his face. Because, like, he just gets punched and then it's just, like, a totally different face under there. But supposedly it is actually, like, his skin. So... I don't know. I don't get it. I'm going to give this one a 5.5, mainly because it just feels so disjointed. And, like, this isn't even... Like, he goes through a little bit of the actual detective stuff for a second that this book has been mostly built off of. But then he just drops it just as quickly to be like, oh, I'm just going to go to this place now because I, I don't have any other leads. So, yeah, 5.5 for this. I, whatever. Whatever. <laughs>